How high is your confidence level in proclaiming the gospel? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Holy Spirit, make my heart open to the Word of God. Make my heart open to goodness. Make my heart open to the beauty of God. Although many believe it to be partly or entirely a myth, just about everybody has heard the story about the Trojan horse and the epic battle between the Greek army and the independent city of Troy. After a long siege, the Greeks retreat and leave a gift and defeat for the victors in the form of a hollow wooden horse. The euphoric Trojans dragged the wheeled monument through the gates and celebrated the end of the war. As the victors slept off their wine and merriment, the Greek army silently sailed back to find the city gates wide open, done by fellow soldiers hidden inside the wooden horse. What an ingenious plan! A superb and cunning military tactic that exposed the vulnerability of the unsuspecting enemy. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus warns His disciples of the danger ahead as they set out to proclaim the good news. He exhorts them to be like sheep in the midst of wolves, to be shrewd as serpents, and simple as doves. The disciples are likewise warned that they may be arrested scourged, and taken before governors and kings for his sake. In these situations, they are to be powerful and firm witnesses to the faith. On the other hand, he consoles them to not worry about what to say in response to the authorities. Jesus promises that they will be given the words to say. No matter what happens to them, the Holy Spirit will be with them and speak through them. Jesus made it clear that persecution is going to be part of the church and that we should not be surprised when this happens to us. We should not be stunned if when those within our culture or even in our close circle step on us and act with hostility. When this happens, it is easy for us to lose our faith and to lose our heart. We can get discouraged and feel like turning our faith into a hidden life we live. It is extremely difficult to live our faith openly, knowing that the culture and world dislikes and won't accept it. Thus, persecution is part and parcel to the Christian life, and Jesus doesn't want us to be caught unaware of that reality. He cares for His disciples and cares for us as well. It is one of the many things that Jesus manifests to His chosen followers, being upfront about what it will mean for us to follow Him. In Luke's Gospel, He mentions to count the cost before following Him. He doesn't shortchange us after we have committed our lives to Him like some kind of dishonest salesman. He offers us the good news of the gospel, the forgiveness of sin through the work on the cross, but tells us that while the reward of eternal life far surpasses anything we could ever imagine for, that it will cost us our lives, that we will have to lose our lives to gain eternal life which includes, among other things, persecution. There is a cost associated with following Jesus, but it's worth it. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, give us the strength 
courage and wisdom to live our faith in a world hostile to you. May we respond with love and mercy in the face of harshness and misunderstanding. Jesus, I trust in you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith. And couples for Christ.